So welcome back. Now in this episode, I'm going to answer the question, how does owner financing on a house work? And that's a great question for anybody that's looking to improve the profit and increase the cash flow when they sell a property. So this happens all the time. Everybody doesn't have a mortgage on the house. Or if you have a very low mortgage, this might be a way to increase your profits quite a bit. So not all homes have mortgages. About 50% of the properties in the United States have a mortgage. The rest, they're already paid for. Now, if those people want to sell that property, they could sell the property and actually have a contract where the people pay them instead of them going to a bank and getting a mortgage or a trust deed loan. So the point is, this situation could really increase the profit. So approximately half the house is already paid for, but the ones that are are already paid for, they're in the position where they can make a lot of money on the sale. So mortgage rates today are very low. They're about 3%, and that's a pretty low rate. Whereas if you are the one willing to grant a mortgage to someone, you could have a mortgage at 10%. Now, why would someone pay more? Well, because they can't get financing at a bank. Now, why can't they get financing? Well, they probably made some mistakes along the line. What do I mean by that? Well, they could have not made all their payments on time, they could have had a foreclosure, they could have had a divorce, they could have just used bad judgment. Basically, it's a situation where people need financing. All right, if they need financing, they're happy to pay 10% so they can get a house to live in. They don't wanna just pay rent and not have anything at the end of the day. So a typical property that has equity in it can be sold and you could sell it and make extra money. So let's take a $200,000 house, okay? According to the tax collector, it has a $50,000 mortgage. Now the difference between the $50,000 mortgage and the value, well that difference right there is called equity, all right? Now I'm not explaining it like Wikipedia would, but let's look at the slide. So we start out with the property value is 200,000, all right? It has a mortgage of 50,000. So the difference between those two is the equity. So you could easily sell that house for 200,000 and be collecting payments on that. And you could be making the underlying financing, leave it in place and keep making the payments on it. Now I'm gonna give you a lot more details on this and I'll be right back in just a few minutes. Okay, so how does owner financing work on a house? Well, it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. And now that you understand equity, you understand that a lot of people already own the house and there is no mortgage. Those people, when they sell, well, they're gonna sell and they're gonna be able to make extra money on the financing. Now, generally speaking, when someone sells a house, they put the house up for sale and the broker goes and finds a lender. The lender is usually a bank. Now, the bank wants to lend because it's a 30-year loan and they'll be able to get interest for the whole 30 years if people stay in place. All right, now that, that loan is called a 30-year mortgage, but it's nothing more than an installment sale, just like it would be on a refrigerator or a car or furniture or anything else. It's nothing more than an installment sale. So bankers like the long-term loans on relatively new houses because they want to do the loan once, make a fee, and then they probably sell the loan to the federal government or something like that. As an owner-seller, you can do the same thing with an installment sale called a contract. Okay, contracts for sale are done all the time. They're done on agricultural property, they're done on industrial property, they're done, done on homes. And we recommend that for all of our people that go to auctions, buy low, we tell them to sell low, and then not only make a profit on that, buying low and selling low, we want them to make a profit there, but also to sell on installment sales because it opens up a whole new market. And the whole new market is the people that don't have very good FICA scores. All right, now the bankers and the lenders, they want to lend on 30-year loans, okay? They're interested in doing that because they can get low interest money from the bank, from the, the bank, which is the government, they get low interest from them, then they resell it and they make fees for doing all that. Okay, if you're a seller, you wanna think about, could you do the loan yourself? Yes, you could. Well, who would you lend to? Well, you could lend to anybody you wanted to, but thousands of people will gravitate to you because they have a low FICO score. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that their credit score is bad. Why is it bad? Well, it might be bad because they just use poor judgment. Maybe they don't make their payments on time. Maybe they don't, maybe they had a divorce. Maybe they had a bankruptcy. So now they have a low FICA score. The bank won't touch them. That doesn't mean they don't have a good job and that they're not reliable. 
Okay, so you'll have to check that out. So if they have a good job and they can pay the payments, you might want to lend to them. Now, if you do lend to them, you want to keep some security. What's your security? When you keep the title to the property, you sell them on a contract and they don't get the title until such time as they have paid the contract in full. All right, so what happens with installment sales? Well, if you're lending at eight or 10 or 12%, you're gonna get nice big checks every single month. Why will they pay you? Because if you throw them out, where are they gonna go? Okay, they got a problem. They're gonna be back in rentals. Okay, if they can't get someone to help them finance it, they're gonna be in a rental situation. So they'd be happy to pay you more interest. Uh, in other words, eight or 10%, whereas they would be getting 3% at a bank. All right, so if you said to yourself, I'm selling my property, I've got the money, my question to you would be, okay, now you've got the money, what are you gonna do with it? Well, what you could do with it is you could put it in the bank. All right, and that's what people say. All right, now, if all the money in the bank, I feel real good. Well, you would. You would feel real good because you have the money in the bank, but you're only going to make 1% on that money. Is that what you want, 1% on your money? Why not be the person that does the financing and make 10% on your money? 10%, that's 10 times more money, and you could be banking that money and make much more profit on your deal. All right, now, you can sell with 10-year financing, 20 years, 30 years. If you're buying properties under 100,000, it's not difficult to sell those properties with an installment sale and get payments over 120 months, which of course is 10 years. What's wrong with that? We call that a contract for sale. That simply means that you have a contract, you're the seller and you have a buyer that's gonna buy from you. They sign a contract, very much like a mortgage, but with a mortgage, you have to do a foreclosure. With a contract, you just evict them because they haven't made the payment. So it's much like a rental agreement. All right, those people are going to make their payments on time because where else are they going to go? They need a little help. Now, look, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA, okay? I'm just an author, a publisher, and I do deals all the time, so I, I'm an investor. All right, I'm explaining a concept. I'm not telling you this is the financial advice that you need, but this is a way to be able to sell properties, be able to sell them quickly, and get money coming in quickly. Now, if you can sell the property yourself, then you don't have to demand that they go out and have a home inspection. You don't have to go out and make a demand that they get appraisals. What you can do is you can waive all that sign them on a contract because you know you've checked out that they make good money and that they'll pay their bills. All right, of course you're gonna get a down payment. All right, now again, I'm an author and a publisher, I'm not a financial advisor. All right, now these transactions work for everybody. In other words, the buyer gets a good deal. Why? Because you'll finance them. The bank won't touch them because they have a low FICO score. They haven't got a chance, so they're gonna to have to put their family in an apartment. They don't want to do that. They prefer to have a slightly used and abused house that you bought at a tax auction and they'll start fixing it up and whatever, then go ahead and be in, in a rental apartment. All right. Now, who do you get to do this work for you? You can get title companies to help you every day of the week. Obviously, you could hire an attorney to do the same thing. A real estate attorney would tell you everything in detail that I'm talking about, but a title company already has the contracts there. They have the amortization scales, so you know what the payments have to be. They have all that. They specialize this, and they'll make sure that you do this correctly so that the paperwork can all end up at the county records and it's done correctly. All right, so what's going to happen with those loans? Well, people that that borrow from you are going to pay you high interest. They're allowed to deduct that interest. So they're going to have to split that loan. The loan, so much as principal and so much as interest, the title company can do all that for you. My point is, you don't have to be a genius. You could just go to the title company and they'll work you through the whole process and make sure it's done honorably and ethically. They do that all the time. Now, what about the buyer? The buyer's going to feel good if you go to the title company. They've got all the paper, all, paperwork all lined up. They're not going to worry about that. What you're worried about is you're worried about your security. So when you sell the property, you sell it on a contract, you do not give them the title. You do not pass title to the buyer. Why don't you pass title? Because if they don't pay you, you just want to evict them. You always want to retain the title to that property. You always want to own it. All right, so a contract for deed is is a contract 
that's just as good as a mortgage. As a matter of fact, I think it's a little better because you don't have to go through a foreclosure. But all the things that you're going to do are going to be put in that document. That's why you need the help from the title company. So they'll they'll tell you when you can take possession. Uh, the people are going to pay taxes. They're going to pay insurance. They're going to make they're going to make their payments. Now, if they stop making insurance payments, you can evict them. If they stop paying the taxes, you can evict them. All right. If they stop making payments, you can evict them. All right. You can just start all over again. There's always going to be buyers if you're willing to do installment sales. Why? Because 20, maybe even 25% of all clients have bad histories of making their payments. Now, they probably have learned their lesson because now they've gone out and tried to get another house or, or property and they can't do it. Why? Because they've got a bad history. So they've made their mistakes. But if they've got a good job, number one, and they're making good money, number two, then you want to think about that because you could be making not only the profit on buying low and selling low, which we teach when you're buying tax auction properties, but they could also be making two or three times the money by selling with a contract for sale. All right, remember, retain the title. I retain the title. So it's up to you. If, you have a, if you're a seller, you want a lump sum, I understand that. What are you gonna do with the lump sum? Are you gonna go out and invest it again, or are you gonna put it in the bank? If it's going in the bank, it's gonna earn about 1%. That's not very good. If you use seller financing, installment sale, you're probably going to be able to make 8, 10, or 12%. Okay, very few people will argue about the price or the payments. They're not going to argue about that, as long as it's within their parameters. What they are going to be concerned about is the condition. So if the house is in reasonable condition, you're going to be able to sell it. You might have to do a little bit of adjusting by fixing it up. Okay, now you're going to be very excited when you see the checks coming in on these kind of properties. You're going to be able to double and triple your money on the sale just by doing the financing. All right, now at this writing, the bank rates are very low. They're 3%. You can easily do seller financing at 8, 10, or 12%, and you keep all of that money. That's right, you retain it. All right, the buyers can't qualify anywhere else because their FICA score is down. Once your FICA score is down, it takes a number of years for it to come back to normal. So maybe the people buy from you on an installment sale and later on you're not going to complain if they pay you off. But the point is installment sales will accelerate your sales process. I said it will accelerate the sales process. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about how does seller financing work on a home? Well, it works very, very nicely for you. You're going to be able to make a lot of money. Don't be surprised if you triple your money. When we talk about tax defaulted properties and tax liens, we're talking about buying properties with tax defaulted of 60, 70, 80 percent discounts. Those are huge discounts. So let's kind of look, look at a deal, just an example one, so you see the example. So follow along. You can replay the video because I have to move quickly, otherwise I'll run out of time. So let's say our student learns how to do tax defaulted property and they go out and buy a property. They're going to buy it low and then they're going to sell it low. So let's say they buy a property that is a value of $50,000. And let's say they do buy it for 10 cents on the dollar. So now they've made an investment of $5,000. Well, 10 cents on the dollar sounds pretty good. All right. But they want to sell it quickly. So I'm going to suggest they do two things. What are the two things you're going to do? One, use an installment sale. And two, be sure and get yourself a down payment. All right. So they're going to do that. So let's say Let's get it advertised so the world knows it's there. So where would you advertise? Well, you'd advertise it certainly a local newspaper, put it on Craigslist, put it on Zillow, get a local real estate agent to put it on the MLS, put lots of signs on the front lawn, let people know that it's an installment sale. A lot of people are looking for installment sales. But what was our value? Well, if you remembered, our value was $50,000. Well, why don't we buy it low, $5,000 is what we paid, well, we sell it a little lower so you can get it sold quickly and sell it for $35,000. All right, that's going to be attractive because it's worth more. We're going to sell it for less. And if we have seller financing, why don't we go about selling it with a down payment and maybe $300 a month, to use our example. So $300 a month, anybody could afford that. They get their $5,300 a month. That's $3,600 a year. Well, if you financed it over 10 years, you would get $36,000. I mean, you're talking about some real money. Let's take a look at that. So the value is $50,000, but you're going to sell it with a down payment and then payments of $300 a month for 10 years. Now, let's look at the math. It looks pretty darn good. 120 payments 
of $300 is $36,000 plus the $5,000 down. So you're going to collect $41,000. Is that pretty good? $41,000, not bad at all. And how much did you invest? You only invested $5,000. All right, so the strategy of buy it low and sell it low is going to work. The installment sale is going to make the deal work because the installment sale is $300 a month. Pencil that out. That's how much every year for 10 years. And you can see there, 120 payments at 300 is $36,000 plus add the down payment back in, you've only invested $5,000 and you're going to come out with $41,000. All right, so you're getting the idea. Now, these properties are out there all the time. Every county has auctions. Two things I want to remind you of. Don't buy any property that you haven't had boots on the ground. You haven't seen that property. Why? What if there was a hurricane? What if there was a flood? What if there was a fire? What if it was next to a chicken farm? You were not going to want that property. Number two, when you go to an auction, don't get excited. Just slow yourself down and don't just bid on anything. Only bid on properties that you've already had a chance to figure out what we just did here. What are you going to sell it for? If you don't have an exit strategy, do not buy at the auction. A lot of people keep bidding and bidding and they win the auction, but the price is too high and they can't sell it. Now, right below me is a, is a free gift. You can go there and get it now.